and speed to your day. This message is packed with life-changing prayers. 15th of May, 2024. Live with Dr. DK Olukoya. Let the glory begin. Cl -cl Clock in. 11 p.m. 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. W-A-T. In the name of Jesus! God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This evening on our Facebook prayer outreach, please listen to this message which has had tremendous impact on people's lives. God bless us to listen. See you later after the message. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, MFM, is a full gospel ministry devoted to the revival of apostolic signs of Holy Ghost fireworks and the unlimited demonstration of the power of God to deliver to the utmost absolute holiness within and without as the greatest spiritual insecticide and a prerequisite for heaven is taught openly. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries is a do-it-yourself gospel ministry where your hands are trained for war and your fingers for battles. Through your prayers today, your your lives will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Shout it loud, hallelujah. Shout it tonight, is my night, hallelujah. 
If you know that every Goliath has signed against you shall be disgraced tonight, shout the loudest hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sing this song loud and clear. Miracle worker. You are a miracle worker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. some prophetic words for some people here tonight. I don't know who they are. The Lord said I should tell you that person over there that within the next three weeks it will lift you to a place that no man can pull you down. Then windows of opportunity that will reposition a life of glory shall be open unto you by fire. It's a word for somebody here. The Lord said, although you have a lot of enemies surrounding you now, but all of them without exception shall be disgraced. somebody here. And it will be nice if you can catch the overflow. The Lord said I should tell you 
those blockages that have been arresting your blessings have been arrested tonight. Not only that, the law will accelerate you into a new place. A new place. And whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, you shall experience a marathon of favor. Jesus. And the power that divided the Red Sea shall certainly change your story. I don't know who you are, but you have been passing through a lot. I have this strange word to you that those enemies are assigned to terminate your life. You shall bury them. The Lord whom you serve shall deafen your enemies unto destruction. You shall deafen them unto destruction. I see a woman here whose marital life is being challenged. I have another strange word to you from the Lord. The Lord said, I should tell you that the, the voice of that household Goliath is dead. Yes. Finally, the Lord said, I should tell you, you that person over there, that the tongues anointed to put you to shame shall dry up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you raise up your voices like fire and like thunder? And pray this prayer louder than anyone around you. It is a question and a command. Say, my star! My star! What are you doing in the covenant? Can you shout it loud? Come out now! In the name of Jesus. Release your star from the cover. Command it to comfort. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. Someone is here. You have deafness in one or both ears. There is a pugging angel beside you. He's pouring the fire into your ears. Yes. Someone in this meeting too. Blindness in one of both eyes. The same angel is pouring fire to those eyes. So that they can see properly. You the spirit of impotency. Lose your whole life. That's the power of God coming upon that person over there. Father, the kind of spiritual surgery that will change the story of this woman as I count seven from here. Let this surgeon angel that has just moved in begin that surgery now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
Something has been taken out. Like a big stone. Jesus. I bind and cast out every spirit of epilepsy. And you this ten persons, the rope, Johnny Hutton, occultic dead relative, I break it now in the name of Jesus. That's the first person. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. That's number five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Silence. Complete silence. Please don't say anything for now. Don't even say amen. Don't be silent. Father, I petition heavens against these people who have caged the destiny of others in the waters. Father, anyone under the sound of my voice here tonight, right now, your destiny, your soul, your marriage, your life is caged by the queen of the coast, by the water powers. Be released. Be released. Be released. Let the wind of fire blow up on such people now. Let them be delivered. The talking from the waters in the head, in the face, in the breast, in the womb, in the legs. Catch fire now in the name of Jesus. Everybody will shout this loud and clap before you sit down now. Fingers of the wicked. In my dream. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is breaking through. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, open our understanding tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Before you sit down, I'd like you to go to seven persons. Make sure there are seven in number. Say, I move from deficit to recovery. In the name of Jesus. Shout it loud, hallelujah. Let's have a seat. God bless you. From deficits to recovery. That is the target of our prayers here tonight. And this message too. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Once you are there, say yes. From deficit to recover. Ecclesiastes 9, 11. I returned and I saw under the sun that the race 
is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Please listen very carefully. This passage is very deep. Very, very deep. It's telling us so many things. It's telling us that promotions do not necessarily come to the worthy. It's telling us that the fact that you can run very well does not mean you will win the race. The fact that you are the strongest man around does not mean you will win the fight. It's telling us that advancements do not necessarily go to those who work the hardest. It's good to work hard. It's good to work very hard. But this passage is saying advancements do not necessarily go to those who work the hardest. It's telling us that natural gifts they are not enough to handle life. Natural abilities may not lead to a necessarily successful life. Skill and intelligence does not produce or predict success. These are very serious issues. This passage is telling us. It's telling us that the fastest or the swiftest and the strongest do not necessarily win. There are wise people who are hungry there are intelligent people who are suffering. There are smart people who go unrewarded. In a contest, the best candidates do not necessarily win in a contest. So being talented, being smart, is not the guarantee that you will succeed. There are some extra forces whose duty it is to steal from man. That's why I'm praying for somebody here. Although Pharaoh is a large army and Goliath is a strong foe, all the effort of Pharaoh and Goliath in your life shall come to nothing. Let your amen roar like thunder. There used to be a black wrestler in those days. He, he is very popular because of his head. He's the king of headbutt. His head is almost as strong as iron. So once he enters into the wrestling ring, he grabs his opponent. Bwah, 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 on the head of the person. The person goes flat on the floor. So the only way not to allow the man to defeat you Make sure that head doesn't touch you. They called the man Johnny Kwango. One day, Johnny Kwango was in a fight. Fighting a white person. He grabbed the white man. Bwah, 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 bwah. The man went down immediately. And the referee began to count. One, two. Instead of Kwango, to just stand in one corner and see whether the man can survive the tent. He went backward, climbed the rope. He wanted to land on the man again. And the referee was still counting. So when they got to maybe five, the man who was already on the floor just started to shift. He's still on the floor. I was at that moment, Wango came jumping down again. He knocked that his head on concrete and knocked himself out of the ring. The referee was now counting for the two of them. One. To then this white man that was already so confused on the floor when he opened one and saw that Kwango had already knocked himself out he started struggling to stand up and he was able to stand up before they counted 10 so they declared him the winner even when they were putting up his hand that he had won his legs were still shaking meaning that Kwango had already won that fight but something stole it from him I'm praying for somebody here. Every clever thief of your father's house, the clever thief of your mother's house, assigned to steal from you, I command them to be buried tonight in the name of Jesus. 
Lighter, amen. Roar like thunder. This is a very serious situation. I'm saying this so you can understand what I say very well. And if you have been watching the Holy Flames, you will have had them sharing something I shared many years ago. My school in those days was very primitive. They won't admit you to primary one if you cannot do this. You must put your hand on your head. You must touch your ear. If you can't do it, you may never enter primary one. Or if your family is a family of short hands, you will not enter into school. Our school, for the first time, we qualified for the finals of the city in Taos Sport for schools in athletics. Six schools came to the final. Our school was one of them. And we came to the final on relay race. If you know anything about athletics, if you want to win a relay race, you must have a good first leg and a good last leg. I was the last leg. Amen. So we got to the place. The race was about to start. Our physical education master, PA master, took us away from the field into the back of one classroom. I said, lie down. And he gave each and every one six strokes of the cane. Remember, we are about to run a race. So we were all jumping up and rubbing our back. I said, do you know why I gave you six strokes of the cane each? He said, no, sir, no, sir. I said, I did that. To give you a very good idea of what will happen to you in school tomorrow if you decide to lose. Ah, under the anointing of that cane, we ran into the pitch. Get on your mat. Get set. Go. Under the anointing of that cane, nobody could catch our first leg. It flew like an airplane because his back was still breathing. He did very well. Give the battle to the second man. He too ran very well. Give it to the third man. He too ran. Was coming towards me. And they have told us never to stand still. You must stop bouncing on your feet waiting for the person. As the man with the battle got to me, the battle flew out of his hand into the bush. So he left the racetrack and was looking for it. He was still looking for it when the race had closed. Of course, I didn't go to school the next day. Listen. We lost the battle and we lost the race. Although we were to win, an extra factor came inside the game that caused the trouble. We lost the battle and we lost the race. Your enemy shall lose the battle. 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 Lose the battle. In the name of Jesus. A servant for the man. There is, when you gather every success ingredients together, there is still an extra force to put into consideration that has to be dealt with. This is where the prayers tonight is not for kindergarten. Some of us here, what the enemy wanted to steal in your life, he has stolen it in the womb before he even appeared. That's why he stolen it that time. And then you are 50 years old. You want to recover something that was stolen from you from your mother's womb. After 50 years, it is not this kind of prayer that we receive. Not those prayers. Not the prayer you are praying. Your head does not know you are praying. Your hands does not know you are praying. Your body does not realize you are praying. No, not that kind of prayer. Recovery prayers are hard prayers. Because the enemy doesn't want to release it. That's why Jesus said, No man. No man. No man. 
can enter into the house of the strong man and plunder his goods unless you first of all buy the strong man. Plunder his goods means that he has taken things from people he has is hiding in his warehouse. A man who had trouble cried himself to sleep in the dream. He saw himself in heaven and an angel was by his side. And there was this wealthy looking man facing him, smiling at him, well fed, well dressed. Now as the angel, who is this man? The angel said, that is the man you are supposed to be. But what will make you to become this man is inside the warehouse there, locked up by the ancestral power of your father's sons. So to get inside that place, you need to deal with the guardians, the powers guiding the house, so that you can get your material out. Do you want to do that or you want to keep crying? Then he woke up. He decided that crying was not his agenda anymore. Sister, you have been crying. Tell me, what has he done? You have been crying. What has that crying done? So it's a useless exercise. From that day, the master of crying. He now prayed just one prayer point for three hours. One prayer point. Three hours. Within two weeks, this man who had only one naira in his account, within two weeks, he had 10 million. After one prayer point, three hours. What's the prayer point? I recover my goods from the house of the strong man by the power in the blood of Jesus. That's what he prayed for three hours. Three whole hours, non stop. Non stop. So the recovery prayer are prayers like that. God is interested in your recovery. God is not happy when his children are not where they should be in this life. When you are lower in the status that heaven expects you to be, heaven is not happy. Heaven becomes concerned when they find that you are not where you are supposed to be. This is why we need to start these recovery prayers now. I don't know where we are going to spend it. But then it is important that all the lost virtue of your ancestors, the blessings of your father's ancestors, you never were not, never able to access. You need to recover them. From whichever camp or coven or strong room they are. Somebody is looking at me right there. See, listen. That strong room under a tree in your father's house in the village that has caged all your benefits. As I'm speaking now, the fire of God is destroying that tree. In the name of Jesus. What does it mean to recover? To recover means to regain or get back something previously lost. To recover is to return to your former state of health. Your former state of prosperity. Many of us have lost things. We need to pray recovery prayer. To recover is to control and correct yourself. To return to a composed state of mind. To recover is to return to suitable or correct position. Those people, they were cutting tree. They had the axe head before. Then they lost the axe head. To recover means you have something, you lost it, you got it back. To recover means that something belongs to you. You are not even aware that it's yours. Others have been borrowing it. To recover is that one. <laughs> 1989. 89. A woman had the greatest recovery testimony that I'd ever listened to. I have never in my life seen it. The woman comes to Mountain of Fire. She sometimes talks out of point like somebody whose words are not balanced. But she, she, she was very regular. She was coming. She was coming. She was coming. She was, she was very regular. When you tell her things, she forgets easily. Sometimes she comes to church, forgets a Bible in the car, Goes back to bring it. 
That is how far the enemy pursued her. One day, at a meeting like this, there was a word from the Lord. That there is someone here. Your brain is inside an local tree in the forest. Right there where you are. The angel of God has recovered your brain and puts it back into you. What was the word? I didn't even know what I was talking about. The next morning, the woman was there, talking intelligently. Then for the first time, she realized that when her father died, her father died, and she was the only daughter, the 11 houses that the father had built, including six in Ikejajare, was will to her. But now, she's living in a rented flat. She remembered. She remembered. She even remembered some of the addresses. It was then she realized that they took her brain away so to take away all those 11 properties from her heart. This woman now began to recover those property one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. Some of them were so afraid. One person even confronted her. Said, ah, which, which doctor did you use? Ah, ah. So, so, there is somebody in this planet that can beat that particular witch doctor. Maybe Ogongo. What did they call the name? Somebody that can beat Ogongo. I was said, no. It is Jesus Christ. I'm praying for somebody here. Everything that you have lost, whether the enemy likes it or not, recover them now. Recover them. 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 Let your voice be loud. Recover them. Recover them. Recover them. In the name of Jesus. See that. This was how a woman who used to live in a rented apartment now moved to a mansion at Alena Valley. It belonged to her. But they mesmerized her. Took away her brain. And they all took it over from her. Because she was the only child. And a female. I'm praying for somebody here. Every clever wickedness against your destiny is scattered in the name of Jesus. So the axe head fell into the river and the power of God recovered the axe head. They had the axe head before and they lost it. It's to be recovered. Complete recovery. Perhaps you have been defeated. You need to recover from that defeat. Perhaps you are in grief. You need to recover from that grief. Perhaps you have failed. You need to recover from that failure. Perhaps you have been suffering from spiritual abuse. You need to recover from that spiritual abuse. Perhaps you have lost the fire of God. You need to recover that fire. Perhaps you have suffered losses. You need to recover from the losses. Perhaps you have suffered bad relationships. You need to recover from that one. Perhaps you have lost hope. You need to recover that hope. Perhaps you have been pushed into darkness. You need to recover from that darkness. Perhaps you have been expressing setbacks, setbacks, setbacks. You need to recover from that setback. Perhaps you have been experiencing rebellion. You need to recover from this. Perhaps the enemy has been hurting you and wounding you. You need to recover from that injury and that wound that the enemy is creating in you. One thing is this. When the destiny of a man has been stolen, it's a serious matter. There are six kinds of destiny. There's one. Good idea destiny. You are doing something is good, but it's not what you are supposed to be doing. It's good, but it's not what you're supposed to be doing. That is acceptable destiny. That is, it is not your destiny. 
But since you couldn't fulfill your destiny, then you now start doing something else to survive. If all of a sudden, hey, all of a sudden, at the age of 50, you now realize that your destiny was to be a footballer. It's too late now. No team will take you at 50. Then you have to start managing something. If your destiny is to be a lawyer, all of a sudden, you discover at the age of 60, and you find that the only thing you read is primary 6. Too late. You have to be doing something now. And that is where things have gone wrong, and people really need to pray the prayers of tonight seriously. A footballer starts playing that football early. There is no way your ceiling fan can become a television set. It's not possible again now. Something has to be done. Three is the first destiny. They didn't give you choice. Nothing. They just push you to it. Your father was a money lender. So you inherited the business. Your mother was a sewing mistress. You just inherited it. First to do it. You don't like science subjects. But your father so you were forced to become a doctor. And because you were forced to become a doctor, you are giving wrong, wrong injection and killing people. Four. That is exchange destiny. You are in the right track. It's changed. Just change like that. Somebody else is now taking it over. That also is available. Then there is a manipulated destiny. It's there. But it's been manipulated. Peter knew that he was a fisherman. But he didn't know the kind of fisherman he should be. He was a fisher of fish. Whereas in heaven, the wrote fisher of men. He was fishing for fish. Then there is a perfect destiny. The one the Lord wants you to do. A lot of destinies have received injuries like this. Is this recovery prayer that can help? This is a serious situation. And I want you to pray like no man's business here today. As you know, this prayer is going back, 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 back. 200 years. 500 years. As I speak to you tonight, I remember somebody I know many years back who wanted to do a high degree in medicine the first day of the exam. As we are about to start, all of a sudden, they had music on the radio. They had military music on the radio and they said there has been a coup in the country. So they just suspended the examination. He couldn't take the exam. He traveled to England to take the same exam. One hour to the exam again. He came inside and announced that the professor, external examiner, had an accident. He cannot come again. He couldn't take it. He put in again a third time. On the day of that exam, they said there is fire. Fire in the building. The man said, when they said everybody should go, everybody should go. So he looked at the other candidates who wanted to take the exam. And he shook his head. But all these people don't know that I'm the one putting them in trouble. He could not take that exam until he joined Mountain of Fire. Rise to your feet now. And all eyes closed. Tonight, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. Before you can partake in these recovery prayers. While you are standing and all eyes closed. So pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Just raise up your right hand where you are. And say what I'm going to say after me. Say father, in the name of Jesus. I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. I need to ask you a question tonight. Are we really ready to pray recovery prayers? Your head must pray. Your hand must pray. Your mouth must pray. Because these things, it is even worse when you are an unconscious loser. They've taken it from you, but you don't know. You don't know. So, whether you feel you've lost something, or you don't feel you've lost anything, I recommend that you pray like a, a mad prophet. All eyes closed. The first prayer I want you to pray, can you shout this loud and clear? 
Warehouse of darkness. Hear the word of the Lord. Release my blessings. In the name of Jesus. Speak against the warehouse. Open your mouth and pray. This is not a day to negotiate. Masika tende keyabo shenderaba. Aha, aha, aha. In Jesus, they will pray. I need for you to be more angry. Behave like the psalmist. He says, I hate them that hate the Lord. I hate them with perfect hatred. I want your voice to be louder. I want your spiritual anger to rise more. Can you shout this again loud and clear? I fire back! Every out of infirmity. In the name of Jesus. Fire back! In the name of Jesus. In Jesus, then we pray. Father, as many as are here tonight, and the enemy is battling their health, in the name which is above our names, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, let them recover their health now. In the name of Jesus, recover, 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 recover. In the name of Jesus, stretch your right hand towards this altar, Father. Let this hand that are stretched here receive the touch of the God of Elijah. Receive the touch of fire, the touch of healing, the touch of glory, the touch of deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you have any infirmity in your body, smite the place without mercy 21 times as you shout back to the center. Let's go! Do it well, do it well. Amen. Begin to check your body now. Do what you could not do before you got here. Once the Lord has healed you, please don't hide it. Run quickly to the altar here so that the devil will not put it back. The healing power of God is moving from person to person. Check your stomach. Check your neck. Check your body. Yes, the infirmity has gone back to the senders. Find a way to this altar very quickly. Don't let the devil put it back. Aha. Yes, the anointing is still on your body. Check it very well. Find your way quickly to this altar. Don't let the devil put it back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is time to pray the prayer that person prayed for three hours. Please, pray the way you've never prayed before. I recover. My goods. From the warehouse of the strong man. Can you say that and let me hear you? Let me hear the sister shouting this. Sisters, your voice is not loud enough. Aha! Brother, shout it loud! Everybody together now! By fire! In the name of Jesus!
Yes. This is very, very good. Recover them, 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 Enough is enough. Yes, the covite, the covite, the covite, the covite, the covite. Something is happening over there. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Uh huh. Something is happening over there. It's a fire burning in the face. Fire. One in the womb, fire. One in the head. Many things that have been stolen, they're coming back. Jesus. Makatenda yaboshen terabo. Boli katenda katenda ka. Bo katen setende ke yaboshen. Ribo soponti la kayabo. Bo kayaboshen derabo sonto. De ki abi katende ke ya. Just recover them. Recover them. Recover them. Seven for the man. Think deeply on anything the enemy has stolen from you and make sure that you start to meditate upon it now. And as you meditate upon it, you are going to sing this song seven times. After singing the song seven times, then you keep quiet. Make sure that your voice is the loudest here. As you sing this song loud and clear. Pass me not to return to see
you will now shout this loud and clear. Every good thing that I have lost, I recover you by fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for listening to us this evening. See you next month in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From Deficit to Recovery, Part 2. Don't miss the May Facebook Move Month outreach that will bring increase and speed to your day. This message is packed with life-changing prayers. 15th of May, 2024, live with Dr. D.K. Olukoya. Let the glory begin. Clock in, 11 p.m., 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, W.A.T. In the name of Jesus!